Today's episode is brought to you by EliteFTS.com, founded in 1998 with the primary aim to live, learn, and pass on. Please help Elite FTS support this mission by smashing the like button, leaving a comment, sharing with a friend, and thinking of Elite FTS for your training needs. If you can put it in a gym bag or load weights on it, Elite FTS has it. Now, onto the show. What's going on? I'm Dave Tate, and we are broadcasting from the middle of the Elite FTS weight room, where the underground still thrives, and you're part of the crew. It's time to sit down, keep it real, and cut the bullshit. Welcome to Table Talk. We going? Okay, I wasn't there. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> one these, yeah, one of these times I'll get this right. <laughs> so welcome to Table Talk, I suppose. All right, so what do we got? So we had touched upon this with the last episode, but I wanted to take a deeper look into um, the train your ass, train your ass off uh, weekends that, yes. we, that we're starting to offer. Um, pretty much just go into like how they started, you know, where this uh, event came from, from mm -hmm. your end, and just kind of start from there. Okay. <laughs> how the original concept come. Yeah. Um, I don't know that. Um, <laughs> I really don't. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess what I wanted to do is we used to do a seminar called learn to train mm -hmm. and it was, it was a big, big deal. I mean, there's, we had all the team members come and there were the way it was organized. We'd have no more than 10 or 12 people per rack. And then there would be five coaches, per station and then the the head coach would be somebody that i had complete 100 percent confidence that they could find any weak point technical physical mental at all and then the others were basically to learn from the head coach mm. but also to keep to not miss anything because when you're spinning a group of 10 people and it was all broken down by their squat when you're spinning a group of 10 people it's go 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 and the goal was to get somewhere between 50 and 100 repetitions per individual so if you're fixing the technique oh, you shit. want to make sure that technique isn't reinforced so mm -hmm. it wasn't about working up maxing out it was mostly technique is what we were looking for we would have a group i think we called it the nasty group which was more experienced and that was about working those guys up right pushing the mental limits looking for the physical weak points but most of the people just had the technical issues that needed to be addressed and then I had a floater, which was basically just walking around to make sure that the head coaches weren't getting tired because it's hot. It's a long day. Yep. So the floater would be responsible for removing the head coach, basically saying, hey, can you go inside and do an interview for us? Can you go inside? You're not really knowing what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, why they're doing it. But it's just you can tell they're nodding off. They're not 100 percent where they need to be, you know, here, step in and then kind of move from there. Yep. That's how it started. And that was the learn to train. And those were doing very well for a while. Then poof, seminars just started to suck. You know, nobody wanted to sign up. And it was costing way more to bring the people in to do it. So we weren't even able to break even. And the goal was never to make money on it. But the goal was just to break even. And then they started doing actually pretty well. So we gave all the money to charity. And that was cool. Then it just started to dive. And it's like, well, I don't understand. It just is what it is it's everything does that so mm -hmm. very, the company started with the west side seminar then that moved into a force training seminar then that moved into um I, I can't remember what the third name of it it was a different type of seminar then it was the learn to train seminar then it was um a, a power lifting experience which was ta taking people through a mock meet yeah that was cool and then there was the this is the just stronger the, business and yes then it tried the business well. yeah the business was the next one was focusing more on how to help you know people build their training and business. Then the last one was here you had like alan yes. cosgrove and and eric serrano and all them because yes. that was the last one i went to as well yes and those were a little easier to scale you yeah because right. you have so it, we didn't have to breaking even was a lot easier mm. because you didn't have to bring out five people per rack right. you know that's 50 people that's a lot of team members to be able to bring out you know to cover that it's a lot of expense you know mm. where now you just cover the speakers and it, it, it's easier to break even this was just i suppose the next iteration you know of of what it is with keeping the cost down it's just me right keeping the cost down but i, I can only do so much mm. you know so 
it started as I started to see with my time training with John and different people coming out and that the effort being applied to a lot of accessories wasn't what people really thought it should should be. So I don't want to say they weren't training hard because they thought they were training hard. They weren't training as hard as they should to be able to progress the supplemental exercises and all that, but not being over the top mm. either. So that that's kind of what brought this about is, okay, the technical aspect is always going to be the biggest aspect because that's the lowest hanging fruit. That's the easiest way to add the greatest amount of weight to anybody's lift. And it's the easiest way to make the lift safer for them to perform. And that's never going to go away. Right. But now the, this effort part, that's a different, it's a different beast. Like, how do you show them how to do that? It's like, all right. So that was the first part. Then, so I don't know how it really, like why. It was I don't like an, know. Ele an evolution of what. Yeah, I don't, I don't know before. why. I don't, I don't know. It was like, wait, I should do this mm -hmm. and just throw it out. I don't know what that was final spark or not the spark, but the final key was to say, okay, we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't content because I didn't, we didn't, the very first ones weren't really filmed, you know? Right. Um, right. Then there, then it was like, well, we should film some of these because the content would probably be good. And then there were, I got COVID hit, but there were a couple that were done during that time. But so that kind of put it, it gave some time to think more about it. Mm -hmm. like how can it be better and be a better experience? And so when it flipped back, what I wanted to add were showing the movements that would help their weak points because they're working up. So the technical, the first part is the technique part. So we'll just use the squat as an example. So they're working, they're training the squat, you fix the technique part, which would be the beginning of the learn to train. I mean, that's what it was. Yeah. But then once that's figured out, work them up a little bit to see if we can find the physical weakness. In all cases, but a couple, I've been able to do that. Some cases you can't do it because it just gets too ugly. Or you have to do it on a different movement, say a safety squat bar and a high box. Sure. Something else has to be pivoted from that. But then you can find, so you find the technical weaknesses, you fix that, then you move and start moving them up to find the physical weakness, address that, that's the first part. Then the second part is show them exercises to fix or to help them with those physical weaknesses. And in the meantime, try to explain to them the best you can that it could just be activation or it could be strength, mm -hmm. you know, so they kind of know both aspects of that. And then the, the train your ass off, you know, then the effort part, mm -hmm. you know, just take them through a training session that's brutally hard, but they can do. So it's to everybody's capacity, but it's to their highest capacity. So it's, I don't even care what the movements are, how they're done. It just has to be as safe as I can possibly do it. Yeah, that's, you yeah. know, and, and push them to that 10 if it's a level of one to 10 so they know what that is. And then the fourth part after that, and I'm really downplaying that, which this is a brutal <laughs> part. So the fourth part is the um, just sitting down and mm -hmm. discussing their training and that several hours. And the other part that changed with this iteration now is the next day they come back and it's the bench and so the bench isn't it isn't as brutal because legs are always super brutal you, right you right know, to be able to do this with and the bench isn't as bad it doesn't last as long but the sit down also comes after that that way they have the opportunity to ask any questions that they thought of after they left the night before yeah you know for that so and it's the same thing. It's the bench, the technical work, work them up a little bit, see what the physical weak points are, show them that, take them through, bust their ass on certain exercises so they know, again, what that 1 to 10 is. It's different because it's upper body. It's not mm -hmm. as hard. And then the Q&A. And then after that, there's we set up an online group that they have to be able to stay in touch so we can see videos you know, of if they're doing you know, the things that we showed or if they're stuck or if they forget something after they leave, mm -hmm. you know, so they have that group that's there. So that's where it is now, you know, so. Yeah. And, and I, and I kind of want to touch on to each section a little bit more, um, in terms of the technique work, right. As, as we're starting to kind of work like day one, mm -hmm. the squat, 
I think most people, well, one of my favorite things is watching when they come in for the first day yeah. and you tell them to warm up mm -hmm. and you, they just give you some of these, mm -hmm. like they're just kind of walking Some around. do, some don't. Some you know, do, some don't for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a little bit of background information. It's like, we're having a conversation being like, watch this, like, mm -hmm. what are they doing? Like mm -hmm. you see what they're warming up and seeing how that can impact yes. whether they're not actually warming up for a particular reason or they're just doing things that they saw online. You know, so there, there is constant monitoring mm -hmm. throughout this whole thing. And I, I think that's important for people to realize is as soon as you walk through the door, like we're, we're watching to see how you yeah. can get better. And that's one of the things I did change because with the, very, the first ones, I was having them do a warm up that I wanted to, mm. them to do for those for those movements. I wanted to back off of that, especially with you being a part of it as well, because you can assess a lot mm -hmm. through what they do or don't do. Sure. You know, so that helps so much when it comes to you almost know what the weak points and technical issues are going to be before they even happen mm -hmm. and where if something's really fucked up we're gonna we're gonna let them know right yeah. beforehand but most of the time you already know like okay here this is going to definitely be something to watch and that's mm -hmm. kind of the conversations that we're having as you okay look at this and you see it differently than what i do but we're seeing the same things mm -hmm. and um that also becomes more analytical from a tool for me because I, as soon as they get under the bar and they start doing their sets, I can figure out pretty quickly, is this something that can be corrected just with a little technique change? Mm -hmm. Or is this something I need to send them to you to be able to open the upper back's been a, a, That's been, a, been big. a big one, right? Yeah. I need to send them to you to address the upper back or to address even the bracing mm -hmm. because we, we want to keep the group moving, but you can take them aside, add the things or show them the things that they need to do to be able to get back under the bar and do what they're supposed to do. It may not be a permanent fix, right? But it's enough right. to get them there. But we know then this has to be addressed later for mm -hmm. sure. Like this is an issue. Let's just get it through here. And hopefully they don't realize that's just, you know, to get they you know, the, yeah, it's a bigger no, the issue. The conversation is there. Yeah, it's more yeah. of a it's more of a bigger issue than what this is. But that I didn't have before because a lot of times you'd have to stop, you know, yeah, everybody right. and then lay that to be able to do that but typically that's been upper back it's been um the bracing it's mostly been awareness one. right awareness. they just haven't yeah. been aware of of the sensations or feelings they're supposed to have in those certain positions yes you know and, and but the goal is always to like i'm not trying to take any of their time away from getting their their, their squats going you know what i mean it's like yeah. the goal is to get them back under there because yes. that's the main goal Right. We're, we're trying to get you stronger. We're trying to get you more powerful. We're trying to get you to maximize what you're doing for your training. And if you're just flopping around on the floor doing a dead bug, like that's not what well, we're. Well, I mean, the other, the other big part that, of this that is in there that most of the people that are going to come to these don't see the value in those things mm -hmm. like the dead bugs or, you know, the one arm pull downs or you know the lat activation movements mm -hmm. core activation movements um single leg stuff you know they they just they're turned off by it sure. immediately you know because the functional training or whatever it's being called it's always been that way mm -hmm. so that real world like here go do this then they go do this and they get back around the bar then all of a sudden they're like well wait a minute yeah what the fuck is that what the hell <laughs> then they start to see that you know this stuff it, it's it's not what a lot of people make it out to be, but it has value, mm -hmm. which that I could pivot that too and say a lot of people make the main strength lifts out to be way more than they're worth too. So it works in all spheres. Yeah. Where that that little thing there, then all of a sudden later when you start showing them different things, their, their buy-in is way higher mm -hmm. because they just saw how that, they couldn't grab the bar with full grip. Now they're grabbing the bar with full grip and their lats tighter. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. there's, there's some value to what this stuff is. So then when it comes to things like a dead bug, you know, a bird dog or, and not everybody needs those things, but they right. might, right? right? But those are the things that as soon as you put them in the quadruped, had this not happened first, they'd be like, here we go with this shit again, <laughs> right? And then they're not gonna yeah. wanna do it right. And then once, if they're just halfway 
bought in to that and then you have them actually do it right mm -hmm. then they're like holy shit these are way harder than well of course you're not just flapping around on the floor mm -hmm. and um that that's a big piece of this that i understand where their resistance yeah you know comes from because yep. a lot of them just haven't been fucked up enough yeah <laughs> To know that a lot of these things actually do make a difference. Right. You know, Absolutely. And, you know, people will disagree with how they're integrated in a program. I get that. But there shouldn't be any disagreement on if they have an application and how it's going to be applied. You know, that's like saying a squat, you know, is worthless. Yeah. Like what squat? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot to that. Yeah. And, and I think uh, in terms of the technical side of things with their form, it's like we can correct a lot of their form issues with just getting them into these certain positions and forcing them to feel different things. It's yes. like there's we have and I'm not even just like blowing smoke up her ass like everybody in this group, every group has PR'd mm -hmm. on something throughout the weekend mm -hmm. just purely from technical. Yes. Right? Like well, it, they can't get stronger. Exactly. You right? can't get stronger on a weekend. <laughs> I right? wish. You know, you know. <laughs> but even like it, just going back to my own experience with the first train your ass off is like I did a 50 pound PR in my squat yeah. with a blown out meniscus. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a, there's a lot of factors. I mean, yeah. There's a technique. There's, there, there's, there's mental things that are mm -hmm. associated with that too. But the, the, the more impressive thing is if they break a bench PR after the day before, that's freaking that, that, yes. that's more impressive to me than anything else yeah. you know because they're shot i mean they're walking and they're barely walking in here mm -hmm. actually maybe they probably the soreness is kicking their ass on monday oh yeah, yeah. Know, so it's a little <laughs> bit after that but but that's one of the things i tell them is i you need to go home and you need to get some electrolytes in you because if you don't you're going to feel hungover yeah. yes <laughs> and with fluids you know the whole right. training day fluids, fluids absolutely fluids. and actually that was a good point with with the the bench pr that was that first group that we had the the two women in there mm -hmm. they both hit at least their mm -hmm. top set of bench mm -hmm. after that ass kicking the day before yep and, and was, a shitload of sets beforehand. A shitload. Because we're doing the technical work. A shitload. Right? So, it, which should make them wonder, are they doing enough warm-ups? Yep. You know, should they do a feeder exercise before mm -hmm. the bench? Should they do dumbbell presses or something like that? You know, there, there's a lot of things that can be addressed, which we talk about during the, the Q&A part, mm -hmm. which is, I'm jumping ahead, but that's the other part. Yeah. I mean, it, and when we say technical work, we don't just mean like a couple sets. No. Like I think we squatted for four hours. Four hours. On the last yeah. one. It's four hours. It's yeah. three and a half to four hours. And that's with what, six people? That was six people. Six people, right? And that's one, two, three, three to four people helping them. Mm -hmm. You know, so they are not going to leave until the technique issues are addressed. I don't care if they work up, but right. there's no excuse to be able to leave and not uh, for me there's no excuse for them to leave or no excuse for me for them to leave and not have their technique dialed in mm. there's none i cannot accept it, that no you know i won't accept that now i will accept that there was so much technical work that had to be done i'm not comfortable working them up mm -hmm. there I, I will accept that because i don't want after you have everything worked well you want to ingrain that yeah and i don't want to have it all break just and have them work up and yeah. go from there so there's other things that can be done. Yeah. So I, I think that cannot be understated is how serious we are about yes. getting you guys better. Yes. And well, to, to not make this completely a sales pitch, um, the other aspect of this is people listening to this need to understand that if everybody is breaking PRs, and this goes all the way back to the learning trains, by the mm. way. I mean, just teaching technique, people are still breaking PRs and those things left and right. Sometimes 50, 100 pounds, crazy ass it's shit. It's crazy. On raw benches, like crazy. a 50, 100 pound, crazy stuff. And um, why, right? So then you got to kind of ask yourself, well, why can't you do that mm -hmm. yourself? Like, you know, <laughs> watch some videos of technique with people that are very efficient at mm -hmm. the lift, that have close to the same body structure you do, watch what they're doing over and over and then look at your video mm -hmm. over and over what can you do to better mimic that and then start doing it you know take a day a couple hours keep the bar light and just start working 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 why can't that be done mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Right. And we stress it over and over and over. But everybody's like, I know, fuck the technique. What exercise should I do to get my squat bigger? (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, you're fucking kidding me like this. So it's it's there is value that granted we're showing them things. We're expediting the process Mm -hmm. greatly. But it's it's this can be done. I mean, there's people that do it all the freaking time. Yeah. Or they'll go or sometimes I'll suggest people go through training phases that are just about technique Mm -hmm. for long periods of time. And the compliance rate for that is fucking awful because nobody wants to do that because it's not fun. Right. Where I question the will to actually get stronger then, Mm -hmm. you know, because you're going to get way stronger by doing that than you're going to doing what you're still doing. Right. Especially when you talk to them, it's like, well, yeah, I put 30 pounds on my squat in the last three years. Cool. Great. So you want to take another three years to put another 20 pounds on Right. when your squat looks like half shit. Yeah. Maybe we fix the squat, put 100 pounds on, then worry about those 20 because getting stronger is hard. Yeah. That I mean, especially at an intermediate to advanced level, getting stronger becomes a very, very complicated process. As a beginner, intermediate, no. I mean, consistency all those basics you get up to let's just call it your genetic ceiling whatever we want to call it it to some degree it exists if it's mental physical it still exists Mm -hmm. you get there your form's locked in your everything matters then rest matters sleep matters nutrition matters everything fucking matters and then all you're really trying to do is can you put five more pounds hell can you just get back to where you were Yep. Because there's there's phasic aspects to training as well. So then it's like, fuck, I just need to get back to where I was and then five more pounds. Right? That's a big deal at the higher levels. Um, but if you get somebody at those higher levels and the technique's jacked, there's a lot of room. And that's what happens is the people at the intermediate levels could be at the higher levels if they just addressed yep. those things. And then boom, it breaks through. They jump up. Technique's more efficient than their their neuromuscular system everything builds Mm -hmm. and it just drives from there and then their their mentality changes because maybe they never thought they'd be able to bench 300 pounds or whatever it is but then they just did so now they think well fuck why can't i do 400 Mm -hmm. where before they just went 315 so the mental ass there's a lot of things that go with this and i think one of the uh the, the one of the biggest benefits that people get from this experience is that objective reflective sort of insight into their what their weaknesses actually are right uh, not just what they think they are or what they believe they are based on what they read online mm-hmm. but you have potentially four sets of eyes mm-hmm. on what you're doing at any given time mm-hmm. constantly providing that feedback for, constantly, every, rep. for every single rep yeah. all weekend long yes not not to be a slam <laughs> on online coaches, Mm -hmm. right? Especially in the strength field. But if all they're looking at is your top set, and say you did 50, 60 reps for that training session from the bar working up to where the top set is, and they're Mm -hmm. only looking at the last one or two, or last triple, that has some value. Sure, but for that one set. For that one set, (laughs) you know? So what what about all the other ones? Uh Because bad technique, that top set is, if it's really maximal, it's 90% of, yes, technique's going to be a little fucked. It's 90% weight, 100% weight. Te- things are going to compensate because you're pushing your boundaries of where it's going to be. Are those really weak points or are these just very, very strong compensation patterns that you're seeing where the weak point was really exposed mm-hmm. at the bar 135, 185, 225, and then say at 275, 315, the compensation begins. Yep. Right. And then yeah. that's what ends up being that hole later down the line. But that coach is never going to see that. No. Right. So that's the value of seeing the warm ups. It's the value of seeing those first sets and all that because it changes the, the, the things that you're seeing on the warm up sets. I could uh, I hate to say anything definitively, usually activation. Mm-hmm. They're just not doing the shit that they should be doing or it's just not firing the way it needs to fire something's jammed up locked up they don't mentally have the right cues whatever it's going to be the top sets are going to be more physical Mm -hmm. (laughs) but if the technical was fixed in that top set the physical that you're seeing may not actually be the physical it's the compensation of the the breakdown that was happening earlier it just wasn't heavy enough Mm -hmm. to break down which 
if I'm to argue both sides, if you want to get stronger, just get stronger. That's true. You can have shitty form and just keep getting oh, yeah. stronger, shitty form. That's 100% true. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no doubt about that. You know, regular, or not regular, but non lifting athletes do that all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, and yes, they perform better. As long as it's safe, I mean, a stronger person is a stronger person. Mm -hmm. You know, so yes, form technique matters, but I see the debate yeah. on the other side, you know, where it doesn't matter that much if they're X. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't agree, but I see the other side. Yeah. So we go from the technique work, which can last upwards of four hours for depending on the size of the group. Then we jump into now we've identified their specific weaknesses, right? Now we are jumping into things that they need to focus on individually. And this is where it really gets cool mm -hmm. because now you see them, we, we put them through the, the exercise or whatever it may be, and you start to see their, their wheels kind of turning. They're like, oh shit, this is, I, for most people it's low hanging fruit. And, it it's, and, it's, and it's something that we see that objectively we can see but because they've been doing their thing for potentially, I mean, we've had one lifter that you said was lifting for about 50 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, so people that have been locked in it with their routine or with their coaches and just doing their thing mm. for so long that they haven't had that outside perspective on what their, where their weaknesses lie. Mm -hmm. So that's where you really start to see that, like, committed buy-in to the process. They may yeah. have just hit a PR on the squat, but there's something different about the weak points when mm -hmm. you take them through, they're like, oh, shit. Well, there's, 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 there's obviously different ways to do different exercises, right? So you take them through, and if they've been doing glute ham raises, and their posture change is definitely one of the weak points. And mm -hmm. then we have them do a glute ham raise, how we want them to do a glute ham raise. Mm -hmm. They go from being able to do 20 reps to two. And like, oh, shit, I never felt it like this before. Yeah. I'm not saying the way they were doing it was right or wrong. It's just not the way that's going to help their lift. Right. You know, and, you know, sometimes it's just a different exercise. Yeah. You know, a glute ham raise is one thing. And then a, a, um, a back raise to a glute ham raise is a hybrid. It's a different exercise. Mm -hmm. There's different ways. Good mornings are another big one. Right. So there's many different ways to do a good morning where the way that we may have to show them isn't going to be the way that they're normally used to doing it. Mm -hmm. They're used to doing it with the primary focus being on the lower back. And, it, you know, and now we want to put the focus on the hamstrings. Things are going to change. You know, mm -hmm. some people, you know, have grown up with being taught their toes should come off of the ground, which if you want to isolate the hamstring, yeah, maybe that's, you're going to get a bigger stretch with that. You get their feet flat, like, oh shit. It's a wholly different feel. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's those things that a lot of the times they've been doing the movements that they need to do, but they weren't doing them in the manner that was efficient to be able to make their lifts go up. Mm -hmm. And that's common with a glute, with all posterior chain movements, the glute ham raise. Oh, yeah. The, the RDL, the well, stiff legs, not so much, but the. Um, Good morning, which I just said. Mm -hmm. Even with like rows and stuff like that, it's just it's all over the chest supported rows. It's it's showing them the difference between where do you want to put the focus of this, mm -hmm. or are you just pulling the shit. You know, there's it depends, right. so that's the part that's pretty cool. And I think what I've seen from the last two has been the weak points are are essential or the exercises that we choose for the weak points are further instilling the habits we were trying to instill with them through the oh. technique work. Mm -hmm. It's just now in a more, uh, maybe a bilateral movement, like a good morning, but we're still focusing on all right, the foot contact with the ground, making sure that they're, mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're bracing well from the top down. They're keeping all of the skills that we were teaching throughout the technique work, throughout the supplemental or the, yeah. the weak point training. And all of a sudden, they're now getting that different response or that different stimulus that they weren't feeling before on an exercise that they may have been like, nah, that just, that's yeah. not my weak point. Right? The, the tricky part is, for me, is I know what, if they were training here, I know what they should do. Right. But they may not have that. You know, so I have to show them what they can do. Yeah. You know, not what I think they should do. And sometimes that becomes a little challenging because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, this, nope, shit, they don't have that. This, oh, shit, no, they don't have that. This, oh, shit. They don't have that. Okay, well, let's just go do this, which you don't have. Mm -hmm. So you see what we're trying to make you feel. Yep. Then let's go to this thing, which isn't the most optimal, but see if you can feel the same thing mm -hmm. there. So 
that's that's a tricky part but yeah. it's it's doable i mean we do it all the time but it's that frustrates me sometimes you know because like damn it you know it's like if but, you only had a yoke bar or well, if you yeah, only yeah. Had, you know I mean, what there's, there's like those it. things but you know a lot of people now they have home gyms and that's where they're and it's, it's very limited mm-hmm. on what they have so you gotta you gotta you gotta match you know what they have because it's it's, it's pointless to be able to say do this 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 and this which know? is another good point about the train your ass off is like that troubleshooting that's part of the process mm-hmm. it's like we want to know what you're going to go back home to mm-hmm. it's like is it is it a home gym you only have a barbell and weights cool like that's mm-hmm. what we'll focus on for you and based on what your needs are specifically mm-hmm. um so going from the weak points then it gets into the ass kicking yes now that is something that People on the outside, if they were to just see it, they're like, oh, you're just kicking their ass. But it's a process in itself, Mm -hmm. right? You've selected the exercise specifically in order to maximize safety, but maximize output and maximize Mm -hmm. effort. Yes. And it it changes, you know, Mm -hmm. because I can't, I kind of write down what I think it should be. So I have a general idea, but it changes. Oh, yeah. You know, the the last one. Again, based on what we have. Yeah, the last one changed at the very last minute because I did not like what I was seeing. Mm -hmm. I was going to do hacks. I did not like what I was seeing on the hack squat. I did not like the warm ups. I didn't like that. So I made it a secondary movement. I moved it and made the leg press the first one, which probably fucked them up. Oh, because yeah. they're thinking it's going to be the hack squat. And then all of a sudden, come over here, you're going to do the leg press. Yeah. And then you're going to superset with the hack squat. So that was, that's the, that's the art, I guess, of it. Because you don't know what state they're going to be in, mm-hmm. you know, when they get there. Because it's already been the, the accessory movements, the technique training. Um, six hours seven hours you know and then they have to have a, a little bit left for q a after you know the, so there's that yeah um and like you said it, it's it's paying attention to what their tolerance is mm. you want to push them past their tolerance you want to show them that they're capable of more than they're capable that they're doing but you, you don't want them to pass out i don't want to if they puke pass out if they puke i failed that's how I look at that. Now, if they're close to puking, I'm all right with that. But if they puked, I failed. Yeah. I really did. You know, I was not paying attention as well mm-hmm. as I should pay attention. Because that's typically not a mental thing. That's a physical thing, mm-hmm. which means I fucked up, right? It's fact. You yeah. know, it's just how it is. Nobody pukes because they were mentally pushed very hard. <laughs> right. Well, maybe well. some. There's a sec- Yes, there's, there's some people that might be. Right. So it's paying attention to the breathing. It's paying attention to their torso position. It's paying attention to the body mechanics as you're trying to drill them into the ground and then watching their eyes, watching their nonverbals to see if they're mentally wanting to quit. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to see is when they mentally want to quit, then make them do more. Yep. So I can show them there is more there. Oh, yeah. Right. But you got to do that while all these other things are going on, mm-hmm. which is why you need other sets of eyes, you know, to just to watch because it's hard to watch all these things, especially mm-hmm. if it's uh, like hack is really hard, you know, to watch. Yeah. That. You know, leg press is easier because you got everything in view. Mm-hmm. Right. So and there's always a risk, you know, with anything, there's always a risk, mm-hmm. you know, so you don't want to flirt too close. Yeah. To that. And, it, and it's very very interesting from my perspective to see you could hit someone with the same reps and the same sets on a one of these exercises and they're obviously everybody's going to respond differently but there's a certain nuance to the execution of those yeah yeah you gotta change it for those specific individuals Mm -hmm. which is so cool to see and i'm trying to pick up while Mm -hmm. i'm watching but i'm like oh i get why i saw this thing you saw it you adjusted Mm -hmm. and like you just kept rolling and rolling and rolling and so almost like you're just re like just reining out a like a sponge you want to get every single ounce of water out of there motivates them i mean it's the the last one the the one guy was super explosive Mm. you know so on the hacks when we started to get to the deeper sets of damn little guys it was was just pause flex yeah pause flex so i wanted him to exhaust that you know explosive component because he was going to just Keep going, and the it? endurance Damn is just going, 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 going. So I need to hit a different. It's the, I don't want to say different energy system. I need to hit a different pipe, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to get into something that he's normally not into. Yeah. To be able to find that other people, it's slowing down. Other people, it's ISO holds. Other people, it's not ISO holds. Other mm-hmm. people, it's strip sets. It's just, and you're trying. It's, I'm I'm doing that on the fly, you know, just based upon what I see, mm. you know, and, and I because I want to break them, you know, or I don't not. 
I want to get them close to breaking, but take them through. Right. Right. So I don't want it to be easy. It's some, some things are just easier for some people because they've done it. Mm-hmm. You know, so many times they kind of know what to expect. Where, and if the other thing is they're watching the people going before them. That's the biggest mind fuck. So they're watching <laughs> that and they think they're mentally trying to prepare for that. Yeah. Some people can effectively mentally prepare for that. And you can tell, I can tell. And it's like, okay, they think they know where this is going, but it's not. Mm-hmm. And then you start pivoting on them. And then it's like, oh shit, now I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what I want is that unknown because we're also working within that, right? They have to be comfortable with that. Yeah, and it's interesting to see because from my end, I'm like, who is gonna go first? Who is gonna throw their hat in the ring first? Mm-hmm. And I've been wrong every single time. No, you never know. <laughs> you never know. But it, it's interesting to see is someone that usually, you know, goes first, goes through it, and then someone's like, all right, I'll go, I can handle this. And like mm-hmm. you said, it's like now it's a different experience for well, that Well, yeah, as soon as you start, it's a different experience so immediately. You yeah. know, so it's, it's, a lot of times it's the same movement. Sometimes you got to not do a movement because of injury history or whatever it's going to be. So it's something a little bit different. Mm. But, and the, the last couple have exceeded what I thought they were going to be able to do. Yeah. You know, so more shit was added. Yes, it's like, it okay, was. Okay, so, all right, fuck it. Let's keep going. Let's keep rolling, you know, guys. We'll just keep going. You know, and they just keep going. They'll keep going. And by that time, the endorphins and their motivation oh, set yeah. in. You could train them till midnight, you mm-hmm. know, at a certain point. And they don't want to quit, you know, because they've are. Why would you quit when you've already pushed oh, through? It a, already uh, sucks. You already pushed through a living <laughs> hell. Yeah. Right. If they, It's not going to happen when you start to break it down into the more accessory, easier, higher burning type of movements. Mm-hmm. And so post ass kicking. It's kind of a, a little bit of a, a lull just to kind of everybody get their shit together. That's where the food will come in at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not for that first group, though. Yeah. Um, and then it's the Q&A, which I think is the real gem of the whole experience. The whole thing top to bottom is, is killer, but I think that Q&A is where you really, really get the value oh, yeah. because you get to sit down and ask you anything. I, the, the, only weird, the only thing that... I'm still trying to figure out and we'll figure out is they're dead. Right. right? And there are two Q and a times is I don't know. And I mean, we have the groups, you Mm -hmm. know, to be able to follow up. I don't know how much is really being retained from that Q and a the first one to the first one. one. I don't really know. So that may change to a certain degree based upon the people that have been through it. Mm -hmm. So it just may be more lecture like here's basic periodizations models here's yeah. this here's, here's this, the basic here's information this. that everybody kind of asks with, it's got takeaway tear sheets yeah. you know spreadsheets whatever you want to say that they have mm-hmm. right and then they're gone and then the next day it's that. more of that one. deep dive you know that way they can mentally chill a little bit you know still ask questions mm-hmm. but have something tangible the next day to follow up on right. instead of you know, assessing, because I'll go home and you will talk before I go home, but then I go home and then I'm assessing Mm -hmm. what I forget. What did I misspeak? You know, because I'll say some things and think, fuck, I didn't put the context to that. Sure. So that can be taken way out of context. That wasn't right. I got to circle back on that um, and then come back that next day. And then I think one of them was, you know, I never laid out the different types of periodization. So I just Mm. assume that they know. And then the next day it's like, okay, let's just recap this. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not too sure somebody's going to say, oh, by the way, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Right, 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 right. You know, so I have to assume <clears throat> that they don't and, and then go with that. And each group is a little bit different, right? So yes. we'll have a couple coaches in one group, yeah. uh, but then we'll have full athletes in the other that, don't have, that really yes. don't do any of their programming on their own. Coaches you know? are different. Coaches yeah. are different to where we, I, we're trying to put them together mm-hmm. and then the lifters. So, so it's a little bit separate because... With the coaches, you know, Brandon last time was one like, why are you doing, why are you doing this? You know, with this other people, that's more than welcome. I want that. Yeah. You know, and you don't have that with the lifters, you know. No, the lifters, like that first group yeah, is different. Than yeah, that. they're yeah. just mentally trying to be prepared. They don't care why this person's doing this or mm-hmm. why I decided to say this instead of this. And, you know, I, I like those things, too, because it challenges me. Mm-hmm. You know, so if I have to say, fuck, I don't know, I just did it. Well, then that's yeah. the answer. But then I got to think, well, why did I do that? Right. Right. Because if, if we're going to scale this out at any point in time, 
I have to, to I have to know why I did it. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of just going 100% off my gut and experience, you know, it has to be. Yeah, you can't scale. Yeah, that. no, you can't. You yeah. know, no, you can't. It just can't be done. Um, so th- I like those things, but the, um, that's why the groups are small, though, too. You know, so that's another part of that. Yeah, and, and I think you, you did hit the nail on the head with that first day. They're just drained. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're exhausted. But, again, it's, that is the time the, between that first day and that second day where it's like, well, we're going to deep dive into everything you want to deep dive into. It's like you, you've written out programs for people for the yeah. year on yes. the board. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, <laughs> you know here's I mean? the like, thing. I mean, they, you're helping, so they paid for our time, mm-hmm. right? So they paid for our weekend, right? So Basically, they own my weekend. Oh, yeah. With the exception of a few hours on Saturday before they get here and a few hours on Sunday for me to train, they own me for that entire weekend. If oh, I got to stay here until midnight, 1230, I will stay here till midnight or 12 and i did <laughs> you know and i will stay a, until they are done yeah one all the time um grand my wife's texting me get your ass home <laughs> but they paid for that you know yeah. so they're going to get that and they'll always get that it's just how to how to cycle that mm. to make it more effective for them you know because they have to retain it now the 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 group afterwards definitely you know the internet whatever the discord group yes definitely helps with the follow-up and i think it helps them because they build they go through something together Mm -hmm. right and that's what was lost when you went through that you go through that with these three other people or four other people it would be cool if you could stay in touch with them Mm. because during that time you're building a relationship with them and that i don't want to see that kind of with the last episode we were talking about the the underground strength thing i don't want to see those relationships just fizzle Mm. you know you want to build that right so you don't know what that can become with those people further down the line well right you know so if you can be a catalyst to start that then start the spark let that flame build some somehow Mm. because they can help each other and long term they're going to be able to help each other more than i could ever help them Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, because one is more of a, ne- a mentor down. The other is there's different types of learning, mm-hmm. right? There's You can learn from the mentor, right? And then that's one way. You learn from the teacher, however that's going to be. But then you have the people on the same. I'm not saying the teacher's at a higher level. It's just experience level. Yeah, for sure. Then you'll have the people on the same level. You're going to learn from them because they're currently going through exactly the same things, which this guy or woman, whoever, may have already gone through. Mm. And they're so separated from that, they don't remember what it's like to go through that, right? So you gotta have this person, then you have have these people that are on that same level, going Mm. through the same curve at the same time. Then you have to have people underneath that you're teaching, right? So it's three factors that fall into that. So we're able to provide the, the, the first and the second, mm-hmm. you know, now that bottom, they have to figure it out. You know, that can be them. Yeah. I mean, that's them the, together, but then that's their training partners or that's when they go back and they work with their clients or yeah. whatever it's going to be. And the, the cool thing with that is when they're teaching and showing what they've learned, they're reinforcing what they've Absolutely. learned. Absolutely. Right. And then when they're talking to the people that they're learning with, they're challenging each other Mm -hmm. like was that bullshit is that true is that not true i want it questioned i want them like maybe he's wrong you know maybe we need to look yes go look somewhere else Mm -hmm. you know maybe i am you know fuck i don't know everybody's different you know right right right. you know and that's the key point you know that's that's the hidden takeaway yeah (laughs) that's trying to be built into the whole thing which is which is cool as one of the people that did one of the first train your asses off it's like i know what it's like to walk through that door Mm-hmm. day one and be like oh shit like, See, i don't right See, I'm, i don't that's exactly what i'm talking about yeah so I, I made made a point with the first and second group to kind of go over to him and be like hey guys like you're not gonna break anything when he says warm up like use whatever you want mm-hmm. like just this is your home for mm-hmm. the weekend treat it as you would your home and we, we can you know get the most out of the experience don't be nervous i was like like they roll in on a saturday and we have like adam squatting 700 yeah. pounds we got loud music going we yeah. got or if they roll in on sunday we just did a max effort bench there's screaming there's <laughs> there's yeah. fucking smelling salts everywhere mm-hmm. right like it's an intense environment to just walk in off the street as the new person yeah so i really take 
the initiative to try to make them feel as comfortable as possible with the environment. Like this is your house Mm -hmm. for the weekend. This is where you are going to learn. You are going to grow. You're going to develop. And this is your time. Maximize your time. Mm -hmm. Ask. And I was like, fuck, ask me anything you want. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as a dumb question because I rolled in here by myself for the first train your ass off. And I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Like Mm -hmm. the the whole environment, it was just a lot to take in all at once. Yeah. And to be in a position where I can help them coming in to feel more at home, to feel as if they are being supported with this, with this weekend, like that's, that's awesome. I'm super pumped about to be able to do that because it is, it's super intimidating, like to, to see you online and then to like walk into your gym and yeah. like <laughs> while yeah. you're training yeah right and it's like oh fuck okay i'm uh kind of a fish out of water here yeah yeah so I that, can see that yeah it's it's intense it's mm-hmm. an intense environment but it's it's such a cool learning environment because it's it is no bullshit right it, it's you walk in and it's like we're here to get better mm-hmm. that's the name of the game that's the bottom line for these train your ass offs it's you're gonna get better if you put the time, you put the effort in, you're going to get better. There has been nobody that hasn't gotten better. No, they're not going to not get better. Exactly. That's, we won't no, allow it. No, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. Right? Especially, like like you had said, we, we left at like 12 or 1230 at night. Like yeah. day one of that second group. It's like we, we set a an hour PR. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, even look at, I don't even look at the time. I just yeah. keep going, keep going, keep going. That's just how I am with that. Yeah. You know, and it's, there. there is, you know, to, to your point there I'm an intimidating person I understand that mm-hmm. and it takes a while before people kind of realize you know he's not going to punch me in the face <laughs> or whatever and, and that, ta- that takes a little bit of time and that and that works itself out mm. throughout the day but it's still when you go to sit down and ask the questions nobody wants to look like they don't know what they're doing yeah you know now the coaches jump right in every mm-hmm. single time the lifters are always a little bit more hesitant, you know, on what they put out there. Um, but that, that whole process starts all over again mm-hmm. because the, I, I think some of it is because the room changed. We go from here into the conference room, yeah. which I won't do when the weather's not so freaking hot. Mm-hmm. You know, that's only because of the air conditioning. Keeping them in the same place that's already had that, broken down makes it easier and more open Mm -hmm. you know to where you know i've done it where people are just chilling out laying on the turf oh yeah that was that was us yes so it's that's way more open Mm -hmm. because it's in the same environment they just shared where now it's like okay let's go into this conference room it's like ah it's weird all around the table but i mean it's too fucking hot not to oh shit yeah i mean nobody was complaining about that Mm -hmm. but it does change the openness of the dialogue and it takes longer to get that broke down for Mm -hmm. that to start really moving yep it's like it's all over like who's going to be the first person right to do the exercise who's going to be the first person to ask a question Mm -hmm. yeah and that's and so that's day one right and then they they get some hours of sleep nine ten hours of sleep and then they roll right back into Mm-hmm. day two and we start all over with the bench press right yeah same, same thing warm idea. up how you normally warm up yep um this time they kind of figured it out a little bit and most people don't do as much warm up for the bench mm-hmm. is they so it's different with there i mean it's the whole process all over again yeah i mean some people are doing 20 minutes of shit it's like, oh, okay mm-hmm. you know some people are doing nothing it's like, oh, okay and with the same process all over again there's the bench which goes a little bit faster mm-hmm. you know it's a little bit easier to to break down which is a good thing because we're tired too. You know? oh, so yeah. they're tired, yeah, but we're yeah. tired too. And um, so we have to take a little more time. At least I take a little bit more time letting them warm up, letting them just kind of walk around and talk, you know, and I try to run off my own training adrenaline to where I want my last set to be literally 10 minutes before I start talking to them. Mm-hmm. So I'm still in that. Yeah, right, because we trained before. Yeah, still in that yeah. training state. You know, that keeps that. So my focus is going to be way higher getting through the bench than mm-hmm. through the bench. It's just, it, it's easier to coast through. And then the accessories are, there's a lot more because there's a lot more things they want to see, mm-hmm. you know, with upper body stuff, a lot more things, but they're also a lot easier to coach and not everybody wants to see the same things. Right. Where having different people to say, Hey, can you go show this? Can you go show this? Yep. And they're all going to have, that's where the, the weak points really begin to become 
different with people. On the squat, this, they're so similar. It's out of half the group is, there's usually two groups. It's like this group has this weak point, this group has this weak point, and that's all it is. Mm-hmm. It's, it's two things. It's, if it's upper back or lower back, last, whatever it is. It's two groups. They need this. They need this. That's it. The bench is like, fuck. It's, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's different. Yeah. They yeah, might yeah, have yeah. two people, might have two people with the same problem, the same weak point. Mm-hmm. And I just think there's more, and that's not actually true. I was going to say there's more joints involved, but that's not true. There's, there's more body parts, I suppose. There's more things going on yeah. that can be fucked up. And, um, and they got more things that are fucked up because mm-hmm. the upper body moves in many more ways and many more movements. So the overuse, overreaching that they could have, you know, is going to be higher because yep. maybe they're doing too much pressing work, not enough pulling work, or vice versa, whatever. And that we got to figure out, too. But that, that's why the exercises become so different. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you don't need more tricep work. Your triceps are fine. You need the shoulder work. No, right. you don't need the shoulder work. You need to actually stop doing shoulders and do this. Yeah. You know, so that kind of movement. Now, do you see, uh, if you had to pick between the squat and the pressing, what do you see as more kind of fucked up with most people? Squatting. Squatting for sure? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I... Squatting, yes, because the PRs are always bigger Mm -hmm. and the changes spread across spread across the body more so with the squatting there's pretty much always going to be some change with the foot Mm -hmm. there's almost always going to be some slight change with their hip position subtle but there's always something there's always some change with how they're breathing and bracing Normally, there's going to be some change with the upper back if it's the grip or what they're doing with their elbows. And there's normally always going to be something with the head position. Mm. So it's, it's everybody. I mean, nobody escapes really any of those. No. There's always some subtlety that gets pointed out that's not big for a lot. You know, a lot of it just kind of works at, works itself out as mm-hmm. I work up. It's like you fix one thing and all of a sudden yes. it kind of adjusts. Yeah, the foot the fixes the hip, you know, so it kind of works up. Now, with the bench, that's usually the, that's not the case. It's, it's usually, okay, they're just not driving into the pad. You know, they're not staying mm-hmm. tight. So why are they not staying tight? Okay, push your foot through your shoes or drive your heels down, whatever it's going to be. And that's, there's like two, three things. Yeah. But it's not the whole body. Like, usually they got half of it pretty well figured out. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, I would, I would say, there's, granted, there's things being changed with, if, there, if there's ever people that something's, sometimes people will coast through, and you're like, you know what, it's fucking good. That's, that's actually really good. Mm-hmm. Let's work up, see where you're at, and then we'll go from the physical weak point. Yeah. Never happens on the squat. No. That can happen on the bench. I've yeah. seen it happen on the bench. It happened a couple of times with people that we've had out just recently. Mm. So you know what? This is pretty solid. Let's keep we got to keep working up until we can see something pop up. Mm-hmm. So that's the other difference there, too. The, the other thing that we forgot to mention was the deadlift. That's mm-hmm. on day one, right? So yeah. that's more so a technical it's uh, technical. It's not as in depth with technical because the weak points are usually shared. Mm-hmm. So whatever they're fucking up in the squat, they're also fucking up on the deadlift. Right. So a lot of times, what they don't even realize is they fix it before they even get there, mm-hmm. because they already figured, oh, I got to do this with my foot, or I got to do this with my, you know, torso. Yep. So that's not working up to a yeah. heavy weight or anything like that. It's I think once I had to do that, you know. Don't, yeah, one, one, maybe once. Yeah. There's been times that I've made it one of the exercises. Oh, yeah. You know, where th- that's a different thing. But that that's rare mm-hmm. where I'm going to make that one of the exercises because I have to go through a big chest l- checklist before it's like, okay, I'm going to let this person work up and do a lot of reps on the deadlift mm-hmm. or push the extreme on the deadlift. Now, there will be people I'll push the extreme you know, as they're working up, say they're at eighty percent, eighty-five percent, even ninety percent, and have them do three or five. Yeah. Which they would normally only do one. And that's more of a confidence thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, now look, you just did this only because I told you to. That was it. 
simply that was all that it was. Right. Um, but there's normally they don't pass my checklist to push those things because mm-hmm. it's like okay if I do this then something's going to suffer when we go to the train your ass off part or I'm not really confident in their ability to maintain this brace under a very very fatigued mental that's yeah we see you that know, mental sure. um, state because physically they might be able to but they start the dental if you breathe breathe as the breathing starts to pick up it's a big movement it's a lot of weight so now you mentally you can't breathe mm-hmm. you know and it's not like hack squatters you hold it hold it and you can kind of get your air you ain't getting your air what are you gonna do hold it at the bottom you know hold it at the top yeah right you, the only way you can get it is to walk away mm-hmm. you know it's just it's it's the tough one yeah so going back to day two we go through the weak points like we usually do we had mentioned that and now in terms of the the training your ass off portion of that you'd kind of touched upon this earlier it is different than that first day right lower body versus upper body upper oh, yeah. body just isn't it just isn't the same no way no of- no and the goals are a little different though too yeah i mean because at that point they already know mm-hmm. what that 10 is what i want them to understand on this day is when you're pressed for time and you get to the accessory part of your training so training funnels down mm-hmm. at least how i look at a training day it's going to start with the main move it's going to start with the warm-up stuff, which that's not really funneling down. So right. it starts with the warm-up. I'm going to say it starts with the main movement. You just need to be ready for the main movement. Yeah. So it starts with the main movement. Then it's going to funnel down you know, into priority. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is the biggest priority. If all you can do is this, do this, leave. I don't like it, but if that's all you can do, do it, leave. And then it kind of goes. When you get to the accessory work, I want them to understand you don't have to do, if you're for training for strength training, you don't have to do six sets of ten. It does not have to be high volume work if you don't have the time i'd rather you just do one set squeeze the shit out of that one set make it worth the set that you're doing Mm -hmm. and go on to the next thing and then in 15 minutes you should be able to get your accessories done and get out you know if you have the time you want to do more high volume work that's fine i mean there's different ways to induce hypertrophy yeah you know so it's just this here's this other way which is you know more just find a way to get to failure you know and and past and is it going to be the same as getting to failure or this higher volume? Debatable, mm-hmm. debatable. I would say no. And if you're a bodybuilder, you probably don't want to do that all the time. You, right. want, you need the more volume. If you're a strength athlete and the benefit of this is just added strength to support the muscles that are going to build this, uh, the supplemental movements, I'd say it's the same. Mm-hmm. It's the same. So then why do the longer stuff that's right. going to be, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you start to kind of see, and I know you had mentioned it uh, earlier on in this episode, is how these came from the, like the learn to train, mm-hmm. right? So that thread of, we're, throughout this whole process, it's not just, all right, we're going to give you really good technique work and we're going to beat your ass and then we're going to have you ask questions. Like you were really taking all these people through this experience of teaching them how to train themselves, teaching yeah. them how to be better athletes better coaches and how to better implement the information that they're receiving based Mm -hmm. on what they're showing up with and i think that itself is such a cool aspect of the train your ass off that i think gets understated is like we are teaching you how to train yourself yes you become more self-sufficient they need to be absolutely because it's They have to be accountable to themselves for one thing so i'll list many reasons why this is vital you know (laughs) Every lifter, if they're a competitive lifter, is going to get to a point to where they have to start figuring shit out for themselves. Mm -hmm. They have to learn how to auto-regulate. They have to, or they just will not get better. A coach can only take you so far. At some point in time, that dialogue needs to to exist between the two for them to move further. I would say actually needs to inverse. To a certain point, the lifter then has to be telling the coach what the lifter needs to do then the coach has to analyze is this true or not Mm -hmm. so it flips on its head that's what i think that's what i truly strongly believe now at the at the bottom level if they're completely dependent upon their coach what are they going to do if the coach goes on to something else or if they have a falling out with their coach and they're scrambling to find another coach they have to have the knowledge to be self-sufficient but they also need to have the knowledge if they're working with a coach to be accountable to that coach and actually hold the coach accountable for one thing, but at the same time, be coachable. Yeah. 
right? Able to so, provide the vi- viable information that the coach would need yes, to make better because decisions. The coach is limited on what they can see, mm-hmm. especially online. Very limited, extremely limited. Yeah. I could make the case almost too much limited, where if this person's able to provide better input, you know, if it is an email and it's not just here's the the video of the lift, but here's what I feel, here's what I think, here's where I think it needs to go. Mm-hmm. And then that can go to that, that bounces off, then it comes back. That makes you a better client for that coach and it makes your results better. Mm-hmm. It also makes you more accountable. There's a lot of reasons. There's, the, there's no reason why I can see. Well, there is. There's no reason why I can see somebody saying, fuck it, I don't want to worry about it. It's off on somebody else. I can see that if strength training is not your um spp right so if if you're a football player if you're a, a different right. if you're just an athlete right right and that is not where but i could i can flip this though and say now if that athlete doesn't give a shit about their technique in their position mm-hmm. and they're not self-accountable there they're gonna suck right mm-hmm. so let's now bring it back to those people that are training to get stronger in the gym just because they love going to the gym. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, that's their SPP, you know, kind of, but you get what I'm saying. So that has to be there. So ultimately, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. There's 20 hours of dumping, right? There's a lot. Ultimately, I want them to be able to leave and say, you know, what? I don't need anybody. I can just do this, right? That, that's mentally where I want them. Yeah. But if they decide, look, I don't need anybody, but I want to be accountable to, you know, a coach, this is going to make it easier, you know, for that, or I don't know enough, I still need a coach, but I know what, I at least understand what the coach is. Or now I understand better how to vet out right. who's going to be a better coach, who's not going to be a better coach. Yeah. And, and I think if, even if they leave here, they're like, oh, I, I don't know jack shit about programming this and that at least they are now getting to the point where they know what they don't know. Mm-hmm. And now they can better improve their knowledge of yeah. their own training. And well, whatnot. we have a whole website full of resources that they can go from. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's thousands of articles and there's, I mean, there's, there's, then they, exactly. They'll know, okay, now maybe piecing together these 12 week programs isn't the best idea. Right. All right. Maybe if I'm going to do that, this one needs to go before this one needs to go before this one. Mm-hmm. And then just understand the basics of how to lay that all out. Long term, that's going to make them better. Yeah. Obviously, it's going to make them better. 100%. So that leads us into the end of day two, and we have the, the second Q&A, which I believe is truly a different experience than that first one. Of course. At more this awake. point in time, <laughs> they're more awake, but they've had time to build that camaraderie with everybody in the room. They feel more comfortable. The better questions come out. The interactions come out, and they can really start to dig deep into their own programming, into their own situations, into their own clients, whatever it may be, that's when the really good questions come out and those good conversations happen, right? Well, they're better questions because they've had time to process. Yep. You know, and they they can think about what they were shown and told earlier. Yep. And, you know, to circle back again, people can do this on their own. I mean, this should be the process that they use with their own training Mm -hmm. if they're just listening because... There's, there's only so many people we can take through this experience. It's right. Just, there's, it's limited based upon the number of weekends and the number of times you, we want to do it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's a fact. You, you really can't yeah, take more. Yeah, there's a hard more. ceiling to No, you can't take more than five or six per group. I mean, and there's a cost factor that falls in there too, where are they, are they, they can do these same things. Mm-hmm. Like at what point are they spending time focusing on the technique? At what point are they spending time really thinking about What should I be doing as my supplemental exercises? This isn't a mystery. I mean, there's our website, there's resources to be able to look and see how should this lay out? You know, what's the accessories? And if you're doing an accessory exercise or even a supplemental exercise, define them as, you know, exercises you do for threes and fives, exercises you do for 10 to 15. Let's just define it simply that way. If you're gonna do them, maybe go online, go on YouTube and search you know, different people demonstrating them Mm -hmm. and look for the commonalities among those people. You know, we got stuff on our channel, you know, John's got a ton of shit that's on his channel and look and then say, does mine look like that? Yep. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, am I that much of a special case that (laughs) it needs to be completely (laughs) different than everybody else, Mm -hmm. right? And this... 
there's different styles of everything. There's loose form, tight form, all this. But are they looking? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we're yeah, yeah, going yeah. through and we're saying, here's the accessory, here's how to do that, here's how to break it down. All right. The internet's a big place. You know, just get off your lazy ass and look the <laughs> thing up. Is this what it looks like? Or yeah. are you just doing the side raises because somebody wrote side raises? You know, and is that the best race mm -hmm. for you to do? And if you question, is it the best race? You know, it's, 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 it takes work, mm -hmm. right? But anything worthwhile, you know, it's going to take work. For sure. And I, I think that the uh, exercise selection obviously is very important. But again, you've re you kind of touched on it, that intention of the exercise mm -hmm. as well. Because you can do, like you had said, a side lateral, like, just something you see online versus really trying to focus in on something you specifically need to focus in on yes. based on the information that you gained, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, then it becomes if you're mentally tired or you're physically tired mm -hmm. that you're not able to perform X exercise effectively. A, why are you doing it, mm -hmm. right? And if you still need to do it, is there a better way at that can stage you pivot away from, to do it? Yeah. Can you do a, can you do a, a lateral machine mm -hmm. that's going to lock you in and almost make it impossible to fuck up? In that state, probably a better choice. Then yeah. These are just the simple things that they should take into account mm -hmm. and just not whip through shit because this is what they got, you know, in the program. And a template. So that, yeah, right. they buy a program and here's the program and here's how it's laid out. And this is what you should do. You know, granted, the, the higher level people are probably going to have a better idea on how to perform the movements. But I would still circle back oh, yeah. and say, are you sure? You know, is there because people can correct I, my training partners are correcting my shit mm -hmm. you know, all the time. Yeah. You know, so are you really sure? You know, when, when right. there, there's people been doing this shit for 30 years and they're still falling out of focus a little bit and still have to pivot. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's you need to double check yourself. Well, I, I think the uh, one of the biggest things that you can take away as a, a member of this experience is that we're starting to try to teach you to ask better questions and to have a better objective lens of what the hell it is that you're doing, right? Yeah. To have that internal dialogue and be like, well, all right, why the fuck am I doing it? Why am I doing this thing that I've been doing for months and I don't seem to have a benefit from or yes. based on the information I gained from this weekend, it's like I have to sit down and look at what I've been doing and realize like, oh shit, like this yes. isn't really helping me. Yes. Yes, I mean, two other things that we really try to push and, and teach is training density matters. Mm, you know, what, what, yep. what you're getting done in X amount of time. And then training efficiency is, is huge, too. Or do you, like you just said, why is this there? Yeah. All right, if you can't tell me why, then it should be Get it the hell there. out of there. You know, and then put something else there. You know, is, if it's just because so-and-so said so, why? You know, and why didn't you ask? Mm -hmm. You know, because what is the intent? If you don't know what the intent is, then what's the effort going to be? You know, you're just doing it because so and so said. You know, it's it's like I said, this is this is for this special group that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. People that training is super. It is it is their means to the end. Right. You know, so they don't have to be competitive, mm -hmm. but it's not for their sport. You know, football or like I made the before i still think it should be approached the same oh, way right, right, but right, i understand right. the difference because to to a football player or most athletes weight training is their gpp mm -hmm. you know it's just the shit that they need to do you know fuck it most you know a lot of them just don't care they're just gonna what they want to do is be on the field yeah completely understandable right because for us if you know walking and say sled dragging or basic cardio work to be able to flush nutrients and to be able to recover is that's important to us we don't give a fuck <laughs> right. right right so w to try to make those kids feel like their gpp should be their spps trying to make us feel like dude cardio is the best fucking thing in the world Have you guys tried walking yeah you, you know <laughs> I, so it's just understanding where the where the athlete who an athlete is and what their primary focus is because mm -hmm. you start as a coach if you start working with athletes that are outside of that realm you got to understand this is what they're doing to get better at this mm -hmm. not this you need to explain why getting better at this may help this you better be damn sure it does because if you explain getting stronger in this going from here to here is going to help this but then it doesn't you fucked up yep so you got to be very clear on what these objectives are and how it's going to carry through, how it's going to help and what that narrative is. Mm. 
Yeah, so I, I mean, it, I think we're kind of getting close to the end on these, uh, these kind of breakdowns, but I think one of the biggest takeaways for the, the train your ass off experience is it's evolving. It's mm-hmm. changing. Every time we do it, we get, a, we get a little bit better. We sharpen the tools a little bit. We get a little bit more efficient. We get, you know, just just better at providing that service to those who sign up for it, those who uh, we're lucky enough to have join in on that mm-hmm. process. So I think my biggest takeaway for if someone's watching this and they're like, oh, should I do it? Is like next time it opens up, throw your name in the hat. Yeah. Because as we get closer and closer to really fine tuning it, we don't know where it's going to be, what's yeah. going to happen, and you know. No, it's always going to change. I mean, that's that's kind of. I mean, there's a kind of a life takeaway there. You know, it's people. You know, oh, he changed, he changed, he changed, he changed. Isn't that the point? Mm-hmm. I mean, so I was supposed to stay the bullied kid in fucking you know <laughs> elementary school. I should have never changed. You know, you, the, yeah. the, the whole point is to change. Mm-hmm. You know, so the whole point of say the train your ass off is to change. Yep. You know, and to, to be better and to never, if, as soon as you settle, then you're, you're, you, that's the whole point. You know, that always drives me crazy when people say, you know, stuff like, oh, yeah, you know, he changed. Well, it's that's like, yeah, that's supposed, point. that's supposed to happen. Yeah, that's I supposed mean, that's to the happen. point. You know, is, is there some other point you're trying to make here? Yeah. Because I think there is, and mm-hmm. it's not that. So yep. the other point is, what part of this did you not like? Mm-hmm. You know, because now it's a different conversation. Oh, you know, for sure. Know, besides that. And that's the whole point. So yes, it's going to evolve. Yes, it's going to get better. And the more people that go through it, it's going to get better because that's where you learn from, mm-hmm. you know, and how to push it. You know, and, so. And the coolest part is, is if we have a group that went through it together once, it's going to be totally different process for them if they were to go together again. Half, half the people that have gone through the earlier ones have gone through other ones. Mm. So that they always get invited first. Yep. I mean, so this becomes an unfortunate circumstance <laughs> in a way, right? right because right, right. we have 132 that wanted to register for the last three that we did. Mm-hmm. And there's 20 or 30 or whatever that's been through previous ones. They're going to get the invite. Oh, yeah, they get first dibs. Before it goes out, uh-huh. you know. So that doesn't mean it's not going to be available, you know, for other people. You know, it, it very well could be. Uh-huh. But it goes there first, you yeah. know, which becomes that an issue for us to figure out, you know, later, <laughs> right. you know, on how to, how to kind of make this more accessible. Yeah. But it's, and maybe, maybe we do, you know, next time when we have a series of them, we, we have two that just go there, then one that goes straight out, you know, mm-hmm. to new, you know, cause we'll go from there. Yeah. I, so, and one, and the final thing that, they take away from the train your ass off process. We've, we've talked about this a little bit uh, in the last episode is that community element. You know, we give them a space for them to stay in touch. We give them a space for them Mm -hmm. to constantly reach out to us, right? Like now we're all getting all sorts of messages in discord with, from the two different groups that we've had so far, you know, with, with form breakdowns, with check-ins, with Alabama, Bama, Matt setting things on fire. We got all sorts of shit going on in there. Yeah. I guess the other point that I should make is, it just kind of hit me as I was talking this through the, the people that have come back for the second time, it's different than when they came the first time. Mm -hmm. So the, the busting their ass doesn't have to be, they, we, a lot of those things are already done Mm -hmm. and it's more specific and we've elevate the conversation. Yeah. So those that may actually end up becoming a different train your ass off you know, where it it progresses through to Mm -hmm. where it then goes down to maybe just one day. It's more of a check-in, where you at, where you've been going, where, how do you keep you moving forward, Mm -hmm. you know, to where everything that we talked about is the first, first one, right? So the second one, which really doesn't matter for this conversation because it's 40 people at the most, right? you know, that's a different, it's going to be a different thing for sure. So that, that may open the door for more, to be available from the first Mm -hmm. perspective because I have a feeling that the repeat coming back doesn't need to be two days. Right. It it could be one day, but then they can train on their own the next day. We'll figure that out. Yeah. But, and they'll help figure that out, but that, that could create more opportunity. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. So any insight on when the the next round is going to be coming out? Anything we can tell anybody? No, not well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, what is it now? 
I'm so confused. This month has been crazy. August, yeah. August. Yeah, middle August. September. Maybe October. Mm-hmm. You know, November starts to get crazy. Um, we'll 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 make some type of announcement. I don't know when this is going to post. Within the next, we got to figure this out. Um, <laughs> That's kind of why I asked. No, we really got to figure this out. <laughs> Probably within the next few weeks, we'll figure it out. Cool. I mean, so you can hold me to that. I just said the next few weeks, so we got to figure it out. Yep. So it's just finding the dates that work because, mm -hmm. I mean, we still have business. So it's oh, still, right. still e-commerce, get... and we start to get into the fourth quarter. Things get crazy, too. It's all so, funky. Yeah. So, but we, we'll, we need to hold ourselves accountable on that. Yeah. And I'll make a note of that yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all we got for this one. Um, anything you want to mention to anybody? Um, just to circle back again to those listening to this that may not be interested in this experience, you know, just to, to reaffirm, break the process down for your own training into, let's say, four segments. First, where's your technique at? Really, really think about it. You know, look at people who are built like you that are better lifters than you. What looks different? look at your technique through a technical mental and physical lens really spend some time thinking about that then once you figure that out use what you determine there to determine what your weak points are going to be and then you can search online you can look you know look for different ideas exercises for activation and for mm -hmm. strength because it could be one or the other if you don't know go with activation first because that's going to have an immediate impact. You're going to know within the next training session, or the next week, yep. if that made a difference. All right, that doesn't mean that it's still not a physical weak point, though. But go there first. Then if that doesn't really do anything, then fall into the strength part. Then focus on your supplemental accessory movements. Are you getting the best bang for the buck? How do you know what that is? Are you doing them effectively? Are you doing them right? Are you doing them with good technique, good form, you know, and good effort? And then fourth, always look for better ways to enhance your training, not jump on somebody's program. Right. Take the program you're currently using, right? Because you might have, let's say you got 25% figured out. Mm -hmm. Why dump everything, you know, start, to, at to zero. start all over to start at zero? Right. Most of the time you got 50% already figured out. So spend some time really thinking about where that 50% is that you can get better and all that that I just laid out right there is what we do. Yep. You know, in these these sessions. So it, it's I know I know it's it's, it's this sounds like a sales pitch for this whole train your ass off thing. I don't like to do things like that if I'm not providing an ulterior option. Obviously, I think it's worth the value. I think mm -hmm. it's worth way more than the value because we're taking all that put into 20 hours to be there. So that's nothing against that. What I'm doing is saying here's your alternative, right? here's how you can do the same thing. It's mm -hmm. going to take time. It's going to take work. Put it this way. If we're putting 20 hours into it and that's four people, you know, the number of people, that's more than 20. Hours. That's 20 of your hours. Mm -hmm. Take That's 40 of our 60. It's probably 70 of our hours. Yeah. Right. So we're putting 70 hours into you on that weekend. So what I'm saying is you need to put 70 hours into yourself if you're not doing it mm -hmm. and you want to be able to have the same results, that's not something that's undoable. No, I'm providing that ulterior, you know, alternative option, mm -hmm. you know, so there's, there's, there's that. And you can't sit there and say, well, I can't do that. I don't have the time and all those other things you do. I yep. guarantee you do look at your phone, click on the little, I don't, the little thing that tells you your screen time and look at how much time you spend per week yep. on social media. Oh, you yeah. can still go on social media, but go on to find these answers instead of just yeah, looking at stupid a, you shit. You've got to have a structure to go off of yes. to kind of fill in those blanks of what yes. your situation is individually. Yes. So it's just a little bit of a pivot to your focus. That's, that, it. that's it. Easy. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thank you very much for stopping in and checking this out. As always, give us a five-star review if you're on iTunes. If you're on Spotify, feel free to share this with your friends, family, enemies, lifting partners, whoever you want. Anybody. Anybody you want. Uh, thank you very much, Dave, for, for yep. doing this, and uh, we will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.